All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Morning here, anyway. So it's bright light out of here. I never see it before I start up because I'm on inferior, inferior uh, software and hardware here. I'm going to turn the game down. It looks like it got bumped way up. Let's go like this so that we can see and see how that looks. Oh, yeah, that's better. Hey, we got some color in the picture this time, too. Here, let's get a little bit more. Good morning, Mike Davia, Fine Art. Thanks for joining. Mary C's back. Ellen, Ellen Olson, trying to make the colors in the waves and ripples look natural and blended. Didn't end up finishing it. And now she's, oh, okay, you got a conversation going there that I missed. Okay, cool. Started doing a painting with inspiration from an earlier underwater mother's 50th. Oh, cool. That's a good idea. Nice. So ended up spending about 30, 40 hours <laughs> on just the surface. But, you know, you get so good doing that. It's, it's uh, you know, you you sleep it off. You come back. I, I bet that you're a lot more proficient than you were before you did that. Hi from the Netherlands. Hi, Ar uh, hi Ariella. Thank you for tuning in from Pakistan, from, from, um, I don't know where else, but Sweden. All right, love from Sweden, Ellen Olsen. I didn't know you are from Sweden. I guess I probably did read that on a previous stream. Cool. Hi, I love you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> if only you knew me. Hi from India. Cool. Slovenia. Slovenia. Wow, we got got people tuning in from all over. All right, nice. Finally catching one of these live. Hi from Illinois. Cool. Really appreciate that you do these live paintings. All right, good, good. Thank you. Thanks for that encouragement. Hey Joe, hope you had a blessed weekend. Looking forward to today's painting. All right, cool. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it too. I did have a good weekend, and the weather, the weather. <laughs> The weather right now in Arizona is amazing. It's just so beautiful. Ten beer here. All right. Humanity by heart. Good morning, says the Triple. And thank you, Edward. Hey, Edward from Florida. All right, man. Thanks for joining. See you in the live chat. Thanks for being here, my friend. Edward was a real big help to me answering lots of, lots of, uh, HTML JavaScript coding questions when I was trying to do do a model of an idea that I'm still working on actually you know I guess it's just a labor of love it doesn't matter if it never gets done but you know I'm surrounded by people that are willing to give their time and you know it's I find that it's important to really take people up on their offers Edward was really kind and offered his time for me and and I I always try to take people up on offers like that because it reminds me to do it when somebody else needs it. And if I, you know, if I'm like too proud to, to take help from others, then it causes me to act that way toward others. I've just found that to be a pattern in life. So I like to always say, yeah, sure, I'm all right, man. Thanks for helping. Thanks. Someone hands me money. I say no a couple times, but if it's the third time, I take it. <laughs> Wayne Trabajo. Hey, thanks a lot, Francisco. Uh, thanks for being here. Good evening, uh, Yaakov from Israel. Oh, cool, from Israel. I don't, I don't think I've seen that country here yet on the live stream. Cool, thanks for being here. I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that we've had some people, but I just never noticed. So thanks for the shout out. I appreciate you, you doing that. Morning, May the 4th be, oh, is it May 4th? <laughs> by, by <word. laughs> May the fourth be with you. <laughs> yeah, cool. Hi from Sicily. Cool, cool. May 4th. Is there something special? Oh, Cinco de Mayo is the special day. So so I guess this is Cuatro de, Ma de Mayo. <laughs> it's just it's just that day when people say may the fourth be with you. Good morning from Laguna Beach. Cool. Hungry, France. Nice. All right. From Spain. Cool. Thanks for being here. Camina. Cool. 
All right, we got some painting to do. I don't want to hold up too, too much. All right, from Orange County, cool. Got a lot of places represented here. That's so fun. Unbelievable, Joe, sir. Thank you very much. Hubdar, Ali, thank you. It's a Star Wars thing. <laughs> okay, it's, yeah, I imagine so. United Artists Nations are all here. Wow, cool. I don't know what United Artists Nations is, but you say they're all there, all here? Awesome. Wow, man, cool. Serbia, dude. All right, Serbia. Nice. Serbia. Is that where my friend was from? Serbia. Yeah, he was from Serbia. Ezrao. Ezrao. He's a top account. Yadan, dva, three, chitri. I had a friend from there, Mir Miroslav. <clears throat> yeah, real good guy. I want to tell you a funny thing from. My friend from Serbia, he said, you know, we're on the paint crew. This is before I ever started the Mural Joe business. And he says, we're on the paint crew, painting houses. We get some people come and go on a paint crew. You know, they're in and out of out of uh, prison a lot of the time because it's an easy job to acquire coming out, <clears throat> coming out. <laughs> so he says one day when someone's there, you know, that like walked off the job or something or didn't want to listen. In my corner, a man talked to his boss like that. He hit his face with wrench. <laughs> like, whoa. It's not like that here, man. Anyway, good friend. I loved it. So what I'm going to do is uh, work on this mermaid more. I, I needed time to get a little more vision for that. And I'm also going to put some more of the foreground in place. And I think we need a little brighter color. Uruguay. Wow, cool. Haven't seen that one yet either. Awesome. Looks like we got 80 people. We're up to 80. Thanks again for being here, everybody. Let's get a little bit more color in the picture. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I need those greens to pop out here. Let's go like this. We'll cool down the. I'm going to work with the greens today. And so I want to make sure that I get, get the right hue in here. Tell me how this looks. Yeah. Nice and green. Looks better. Looks a little better. I bet we get a little more color. Ha ha, true, true, says <laughs> Dan. All right. From England. All right, cool. Thanks for being here from England. Man, I feel sad that I can't just go visit all these places, you know. I feel like on the inside, I'm a world traveler. I just I just haven't be able been able to do that very much yet in life but man do i want to travel hi again from scotland all right cool philippines gorgeous joe thank you very much believe 3.0 adora of eternia cool name gives me the giving me some loving eyes there on the little emoji thank you very much i've i've decided in life this is a, a conscious decision i don't use emojis i don't but I'm not against them. I think it's really fun that other people use emojis. I'm looking for a brush so I can start painting while I'm talking. Uh, so emojis, you know, they just have the potential to, to, you know, change a language. It's like we're we're actually inventing new letters every time we use. You know, but the expectations. It's like once I send that first emoji out with little X's and nose of hearts and whatever it is, smiley faces. It used to just be a colon and a parenthesis for a smiley face or a frowny face. But then you send a text one day that doesn't have an emoji and people are like, why are you mad? <laughs> That's what I don't want to happen. <laughs> I would be very happy if I were your student. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you would be. I've tried having students before. I don't think I have the gift of keeping students happy. You know, maybe making videos is a, is a better way. I'm from Germany. Cool. Thanks for being here. <laughs> I'm a traveler too, but only in my mind. Saving my carbon footprint. <laughs> All right, good. Nice. 
Okay. So, what am I going to do first here? I thought it'd be cool to. Uh, I thought it'd be cool on this foreground right here to kind of develop that more and put some of the maybe a little a little bit of this. You know, I start at the beginning with this this bright green kelp in there, and so I think I want to see more of a to get the vision. See more of a finished product in here. So I'm going to scoot the camera over just a little bit here. Let's let's do it over here and see this side of the painting. Maybe we can go down here. And yeah, that would be good. And then I'm going to start putting the darker colors in there. And I just want to make I want to make some shapes emerging out of a blue atmosphere. So this, this is tricky underwater getting this. I want this to be real deep. So I got to use lots of, lots of paint, lots of my darker blue or paint to get this to look real deep and see how gray it is up in here. That's going to look a whole lot better once I get a little more color in there. So I think I'm going to, all I used was a little bit of black and white up in this blue to keep it from being you know, like 100% saturation. Uh, I always try to leave room for my most colorful highlights, you know, if I, if I want to do that at the end. It's wise to leave some room so I don't go too bold at the beginning. I mean, it's pretty bold. It's a pretty, pretty bright blue painting. But I'm always trying to save a little bit of room. So what I'm thinking is that for the most part, I'm going to have I'm going to have dark shapes like silhouettes and maybe just little bits of highlights coming up out of these shadows, you know, like on the edges. So on this on this tree that's coming up, I'm not going to destroy that tree. I'm just bringing this this atmosphere up next to it. So I'm adding a little bit of white right here to lighten it as it goes up. But I have to make sure that I that I don't add so much that it gets all crazy bright. You know, we got to keep the keep the darkness in there so that it looks like shadows just a little bit now that bluer color is going to give me a lot more depth so i go over here put that color in between these these tree trunks that i wanted to have kind of shooting up out of the darkness here yeah i think that'll be better just enough that we're going to see my I'm going to see my shapes coming up out of there. So I'll make that darker. I'll go over in here, put some more of that dark blue on this side too. Let me move this stool out of my way. Love that color blue. I do too. I would compare this to a phthalo blue. You know, if you get phthalo blue in a tube, then you would get a real similar get a real similar look let's see if i got that down here i want to show you orange green magenta there's my black oh yeah there's my blue i've got some uh i've got some acrylics here i got some tubes so watch this if we put this blue now people ask me a lot you know these these are wall paint like house paint versus uh the tubes that maybe a lot of artists are used to. And so people ask me a lot, what's the difference? And so if I put them side by side right now, you can see a much darker color on that tube. The pigment is, is more concentrated. And I think for that reason, the finish is not as durable. So, you know, the tube, it's really for, it's for bright color for a painting that's gonna be sheltered and protected. Uh, the wall paints are like, you know, especially this more extensive paint it's like bulletproof you know it's like a really tough paint and so i love using it for big things fast work it's it's real fast because it has a lot of water in it but if i add white to this one here let's do it so so that we have a good experiment if i just take some white right here and add it to this one okay look at that color and so this is when we're you know the white gets in there and on a, on a microscopic level, it's, it's going in between all the little particles. So we're seeing the white uh, shining through all of the transparent blue particles. So we're getting a good 
we're getting a good visual of, of the actual color of this uh, paint. And then if I add white to this, this big section I put right here, you can see that we would call this the same, same thing, you know. This is very similar in color. And so I especially like this thalo blue that I'm that I'm using from Sherwin Williams. You know, this one I'm using is uh it's not actually this line of paint, but the company. <laughs> Why am I even showing you this? You can't see it. It's from Sherwin Williams. And so I just call it Thalo Blue because look look how much the same it is. And I think, I believe that it is made from the same pigments, the same process. But anyway, it's really handy for doing underwater scenes because I get that nice deep turquoise color. So I'm going to put more of this blue in here. I'm going to get rid of what one viewer called the frog right there and just get rid of that guy. hate that thing. I tried to get rid of it. It was like, looked like a little creature screaming in the forest there. And I was like, oh, I got to get rid of it. And then it looked like a big head of some other creature. You know, it's hard not to get distracted. I get sabotaged. All right, we're putting blue in there. I'm going to get darker and darker as I go down. And I've got this whole painting on an, at, at an angle. You know, the horizon's going this way. Like if it were a camera, the camera's tilted. And so I'm going to make sure that my my gradient that gets darker is, is happening this way, not this way. So I'm getting darker and darker as I go down here. Let's add a little bit of black. And so, yeah, I need to update my, update the FAQ on, on the website, but you can go there and see a lot of, a lot of information regardless of the kind of paint that I like to use. This, this is, wall paint same thing i'd paint a wall with just a little bit more expensive line of it but if you get the cheap cheap stuff it works totally works and it's really great for practicing i mean how many times are you actually making a painting in order to have it last 100 years you know i think more frequently we're just trying to have a good time or practice learn and so it takes the pressure off when you just get cheap paint cheap supplies Put together stuff that you know is just going to be garbage uh, that's how i learned that's how i that's how i self-trained i don't really feel like i'm self-taught you know because so many people have you know gone before me and done a good job of putting excellent work out there for others to see and learn from so i don't know i just feel like self-taught sounds a little bit a little bit uh self-centered <laughs> But self-trained, you know, I made a decision to spend so, so many hours learning how things work in order to reproduce imagery from my mind. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm going to put a little bit of trees up in here with just black. And I'm just getting a little bit of a, a border. And it's going to dry darker. So I always have to remember. What I put on there drives darker, so I'm actually going to see, you know, I'm going to see my my edges as they go up there. And so I've got kind of layers of some plants in here. I'm going to put maybe uh, maybe a little bit more, like I want to see this horizon go through. And it might seem like tiny little tedious details at the moment, but it actually does make a really good visual difference I find to just work on the, the small things along a horizon is a big difference maker. So we, we get just key lines going through the horizon because we're just, you know, I feel like I'm trained visually to detect how many layers, how much depth is just in that couple inches across the horizon of a painting. I mean, look at this, look where all of the stuff that's, that's creating a, you know, all the stuff that looks big and far away and maybe causes my imagination to say, what, what is this? What is this scene? Where is that place? All of that is, is happening, you know, on this little strip that's just a few inches of painting. And so, you know, if I just kind of set the stage, then there's so much that can happen with just little, little key lines along a horizon. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to uh, paint it, but just strategy. 
Okay, I'm getting a little darker as I go this way, putting trees coming up in here because I want to create that, that horizon that goes right up here off the picture. And then I kind of like these shapes I've got in here, so I'm going to get a little bit darker color mixed right in here and maybe re redo some of these shapes coming across like this. Maybe this is some kind of a tree in here. And we'll make sure that this one stays visible coming out and across the, the foreground more. I'm just trying to create layers in my, my underwater forest. Darker branch here goes this way. And then I'm going to put maybe a darker one coming up here next to this one here. Let's put a big dark, dark tree trunk going like this. This paint is still wet because I put it on so heavy. And I'm going to make sure that I'm kind of minding my upward. I got to think about a vanishing point here. You know, I've got things going upward, so it's good if I make them all slightly tapered. See how the perspective of the city is slightly going like this. It kind of puts a towering perspective on it. Let's go like this. Go up here, make another branch in the foreground. Like that. And then let's go down here and maybe work on these a little more. So I want these colors, by the time they get way down here, to be almost the same color. And that's what gives me my deep water look is that these merge into almost the same color and you can just barely see an edge. So I think that something that's been a hang up for me for a long time is always wanting to, if I'm gonna make something, I really wanna make it, I wanna make it pop, I wanna make it striking. And so it, it really took some time to learn subtlety and the great value uh, that subtlety has in a picture because it leaves room for imagination and it also creates something that is that is uh, very abundant in the world around us uh, is just we we can barely see an image in an atmosphere in a fog and we love we love the way it looks it has mystery it has all this information to to look at it's not an understated picture it's an interesting picture and so i uh, try to use a lot more subtlety in my work now so here i just want a dark of course i got so dark on here that just pure black is plenty go up like this put some Put some branches going up. I don't know which way, maybe something like that. And then watch this fun trick. I'll just put a little bit of a, put a little bit of a brighter edge on a couple of these. Let's get some, let's get some white and green. I'm just gonna use a, a scrap area. So maybe I'll go like this. Um, I'm just looking for something to put paint on. You know, what I think is a good idea. Watch. I've got these clips up here. Can you see, can you see there? You can see here. Let's put it right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take a clip. Actually, I'll get another. I've got this board that I'm working off of, and I keep these these clamps around, and I can just put this up on the top of the board. We'll just stick that right in there. Just go like this. Oh, there we go. Now we got a little palette to work on here. Watch. Watch, let me bump up the camera a minute so you can see what I did. Here, sorry. Sorry for bumping that. There, see that? See that lid? So I'm just going to put the paint right on there. And when I go up and paint that mermaid, I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll just use that little palette that's on that clip. I like to work right in front of me all the time. Keep everything right out here. You know, I don't, I don't want to look down at a palette and then up at my pain. Mystery in the mist. That's it. That's it. And in the midst. <laughs> Clever. I've used Sean Williams sample paints. Great way to get a smaller amount of different colors. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah. And I think so many paint stores have, have uh, begun to offer 
sample sized paint. So I think this is a real nice thing for experimenting artists, not trying to do like, you know, uh, like studio grade, grade work, you know. Love the imprint <laughs> palette. Yeah. Thank you. I was looking for a bigger lid, but this one is going to work. So I want a bright green. When I start running out of room on my picture, I don't want to destroy things that I've got painted in there now. When I start running out of room, that's when it's time to put that in there. So let's get a little bit of green. This is bright yellow and phthalo green. Does that look bright green where you guys, someone leave me a comment. Tell me if that looks bright green or just kind of muddy green. I'm curious about it. if it's just my computer or if it really is kind of not a very bright color. I'm going to saturate the, I'm going to saturate the color a little bit more. See if that helps this because I really am using a very, a very bright green. Let's see how that looks. Ah, that's better. That's a better green. Let's cool down the image a little bit too. Man, I'm telling you, technology's got problems with representing life like color. It's fun having all the color. It's good enough that it's real enjoyable. But then when you're trying to do more technical things, there's all of these conflicts with, with the relationships of colors when you want to adjust and create. Okay, we've got some bright green. And what I'm going to do is don't put too much water on that palette. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's put a little stripe in here right along this edge and create a little bit of light coming right down around this. Maybe there's like, you know, some little, little green. I don't know what kind of things would grow on the edge of a tree, but I think edge lighting is just such, such a mm, awesome thing in a picture. You know, I love, I love putting a little bit of a light on the edge of things just, just to accent it. So I'm just putting little, little bright spots down along the edge of this, this tree-ish thing. And you know, wherever I, wherever I blend it more, it creates a different shaped edge than wherever I have a harder edge. So I can, you know, kind of obscure the, the shape of that edge with this. Okay, let's just use pure yellow. You know, yellow makes a nice, a nice green too, a real, a real um, uh, natural looking green. It doesn't, it doesn't look overly green. And uh, I use it a lot in, in paintings to do greens, to do, uh, you know, plants. I'll use yellow with black a lot of the time. Yeah, let's do some more in here. And look, I can just do it green first here. Put green here, get some bright green here. Not just 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 blob it on there, do this on there, this, put some in there. And of course it's way too much. It's more than I want. And then let's put some over in here, like maybe there's some coming across here, like that. We've got some kind of a tree branch coming across that city right there. We really want to fill in this foreground with some cool looking stuff. So let's go like this. And then what I do is just put black right over the top of that. The black is a real powerful pigment usually and can easily cover up this middle, especially if I don't stir it around too much. And then I just blend my way to the very edge like that to create a backlit effect on objects. So a lot of times when I'm doing trees and a forest canopy, something where we're looking up and we want to see light on all sides of something because we're under it and we see the light kind of wrapping around the edges, then I'll use this technique. Let's put black right across here, nice and dark. Oh, we got another one there here. Let's just bring it down and go. Who knows where that might go? Then let's blend this edge like this. And now we've got this, this dark, dark branch out in the foreground because we have these dark shadows. Something I've talked about a lot in the past is, is uh, getting 
getting depth in the picture by changing the shadows, focusing on the shadows rather than just the the colors that are in the highlights. You know, since we're thinking in color, we're trying to to really just stay conscious of that. And you can forget that shadows are the huge difference makers. The color of the shadows is, is the huge difference maker for depth in a picture. So let's put some blue in here to make this look like it's a little deeper in the water. Make it look like it's in this picture. And then I'm just, I'm just piling the black on. It's going to drip probably. <laughs> it's on there. It's so heavy. So I'll just have to watch it. I'll just have to keep my eye on that black on painting and keep keep dabbing it as it starts to sag. Let's go in here and put this black on right up this edge, just like that. Yeah, there we go. We got some got some fun shapes coming into the foreground here. I better not do too much. I don't want to get rid of my my mystical city there, you know, I really enjoy that. I don't want to just, I do care about my background. I was brainstorming earlier thinking how many, what, what areas on this could I, could I put shapes across without losing too much? So just because I'm trying to be an honest guy, I want you to know that I thought about putting something across the middle of that prior to doing it. I've done real spontaneous things like that and then regretted it so you're not alone if uh, that also happens to you <laughs> okay i'm just piling on the black until this yellow no longer looks like it's dominating the the scene just a little bit is good i'm going to put some blue on here too right up in here to get a little bit more relevant color just add enough blue to get that to look like it's like it's under this water. And then maybe I can maybe I can ease up on that yellow. Let's grab a little bit of white and see what happens if I just go along this edge and turn that yellow a little bit more of a grayish yellow just by touching it on these yellowest areas. You know, it's like, okay, bright is cool, but does it really need to be that bright in this spot? Because I've got a lot of other spots to work on. And so I get I get my effect. I think I my thought process follows that when I'm mixing colors too. I get the hue, I get the extreme version, like just the color on the rainbow. But then I dial down the darkness and the gray level after I after I get that color. And so here it might be the same story in, in my picture. You know, I'm thinking, okay, cool, cool effect. I like the effect, but does the effect need to be this extreme? Because I think finding the balance of just enough makes for a more attractive picture than trying to push. It's fun to push the to push the boundaries. You know, it's fun to push all the way to the, to an edge. But I I think it's cool for experiments for showing off but balance is better for beauty, for a nice looking end result. Just my, just my opinion on that. Something that's hard to understand when you're a teenager that wants to challenge all claims in the world. <laughs> balance. <laughs> I think those browns are way too strong considering it's underwater. Yes, yes, okay, well, that's why we had the blues, but I will say that I'm looking at the computer screen and something about the, uh, if I go a little bit cooler on the color, everything will turn more blue and it'll be more like it looks where I am. Let's add some more blue in here. Mm, that does look better. Look at that. The browns are way too strong. I'm gonna take your advice. Let's go bluer. Let's go like this. Put more blue in those shadows. We need lots of blue because it's underwater. So that was some good insight there. Very good, very good. And now I'm going to put some, you know, here's how I'm going to approach doing like some bright backlit kelp forest going down into this, into this area here. So I'm going to move back 
back down. Let's look more, more to the bottom of the picture. And I've, I've kind of obscured all of the depth that I once had in this because now I, I've changed the context. Now I've got all this deep, dark color. But I like these shapes. I like this layout. And so what I need to do is try to try to uh, merge these things together. So I had my my land mass coming in here. And so I'm just going to start adding my color, adding my color back in here and maybe put a little bit of my white. Now I've got kind of some of that yellow in the mix, but I don't care. As long as it all blends together, it's just going to give me more interesting complexity in my picture. And so then we've got kind of the, the texture of ground coming across here. So I'm just putting, putting some horizontal shapes for now. And all, all I'm doing is just trying to tie these bolder colors into, into the grayer colors that are over here. So I'm just taking this Taking this background, let's hit both sides of it, get some of that blue, and just blending it over this way just enough that I can feel good about starting in on my on my kelp kelp forest area. I want to do some there. See how that's kind of creates a little bit of ground and perspective going back, just, just some shapes there. And so then right in here, I had plants and they kind of disappeared. So I'm gonna do that same trick. I'm gonna go yellow and I'm gonna go green. And then I'm gonna use a blue and black mix to put real dark shadows across this after I get all these bright colors in here. So let's go bright, bright color right in here. We're just going to make blobs going down this way. Let's make a blob going down like this way. Let's go up in here. There's nothing too important right there. We're just making leaves that are kind of squiggling in the current, maybe. Someone's tuning in right now thinking, this guy is not that great. <laughs> he thinks he's all that, saying he's making <laughs> leaves and squiggles. That's just yellow. We're going to put the bright color in here. and move down this way and now what i'm going to do is on top of that i'm going to put my put my dark color to turn this into silhouettes and so just like i did in here i'm going to make sure that i add add blue and black so let's put blue right here and start filling in the middle of it i'm just going to make shapes all over it like this and then i'm going to put black everywhere that i put that blue as well. So we're going to put leaves going this way and that way, going all over. I just want them to have a little bit of that bright yellow green around them still. So I can actually go pretty pretty loose on my technique, I think, and, and still get a pretty pretty good look for this. As long as I have those bright little little highlights in my picture, you know, I'll have that contrast that'll bring this forward. I'm going to get darker and darker as I go down here. So let's put lots of black down there, lots of black there, put some blue in there, then come up here, kind of swoop it out. This seems like it works pretty good going up like this, swooping upward with the brush to get those shapes. Go like that. I've got got a lot of a lot of yellow still up here at the top. Let's make sure we get lots of dark dark trunks coming down like this. We've got a brighter, greener color. Then our darker our darker silhouette coming down right in front of it. So I'm just going to get a real dark middle on this. This is going to look like hopefully the like the middle most shadow trunk area of a big stalk growing up right in here. 
So I think the trick a lot of the time is just getting real consistent gradients with pictures. I start to lose my shapes. You know, I want to I want to have the shapes that that communicate an object right in harmony with the colors that are telling the same story. So so here's where I'm just going to tidy up the shape just enough to to make this look like individual little stalks that are growing up in here and then maybe after I get those in place, I'll come in and add little bits of blue water again into the background in between. Right here, we've got the dark color. Okay, now let's take our blue, add that there, maybe a little bit of white, and then Right in these spots, I can I can kind of reinforce the feel of atmosphere by making sure that I have this visible blue color. Blue is going to make a real good sharp contrast with the with the yellow in there. Just get that blue in between. Puts a little bit of little bit of background. Okay, now all together, I just got to get darker and bluer as I go down. So let's just load this up, blue and black. We got black, we got blue. I'm just going to start putting it in here. And then I'm going to put more. I'm going to put more of that. More of that Kelpy look. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> Put some in here and here, and I really like that bright yellow highlight. Yeah, let's put blue in it instead of green. Let's just put the blue, because that's going to make a green that's plenty bright enough, but also start creating the shadow for me. So we'll put some, put some blue in there. Here, let's kind of accent this one. I like that bright, that bright color. I'm going to put a little more of that. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of bright color right on the end of it. Up at the top, you know, maybe I want a little bit more light, a little more light in there. Okay, now I'm going to take my darker, bluer color again, blue and black down here, and just start, start putting some shadows in here, maybe down here like this. Then come down in here and put some, put some atmosphere. So here's where I've got blue, black, and white to create atmosphere. So I could go probably all day back and forth doing, doing atmosphere and then more of this layers and layers to get it to really look foresty. But I don't want to kill all the time today doing that, doing just that look. Let's see if I can get a little bit, a little bit better view on here. There you go. Now you can see where I'm painting a little bit more. So, you know, I don't want to kill all the time doing this, but this is fun. I am enjoying putting this, this foreground atmosphere and really is starting to bring it together for me. And I, I like that look. And I've got to make sure that I leave this light enough too, you know, so that I can get even darker shapes out in front of it. That's how I, that's how I'm going to create the feel of a, of a forest is by always leaving room to go closer. Or you could always just put stuff into the background. I could start on the foreground and go lighter, lighter and lighter as I go back too. That might be cool. Let's maybe just put a little bit more and then call it good. I feel like I could put just a little bit coming down in here. A little bit of highlights here. Let's put white in that yellow. Right there's some, right here's some. But let's keep it nice and dark down here, nothing too bright.
There we go. Yeah, I think it needs like just a little bit. I'm feeling a little bit more here. We'll do just a little bit more on this. I feel like if I just get a few a few more layer, layers going different directions, then it'll then it'll look better. I'm thinking one going in here. What do you think? Like kind of up here, swooping like this. Then we can kind of see it going in front of that background. I'm just using the long point of the brush now, like this, like this, using the long end. Make some leaves coming off there, bright yellow. Let's put a little bit of blue in there, make it greener. And then I'll put black on that after I get it in place. A little bit of black. <laughs> I kind of lost my, kind of lost the flow of the shapes. You see that? So this is where, this is where I'm trying to stay in touch with what shapes are going which way. You know, just put enough. Enough little detail lines in there that I can see, that I can make out individual stalks getting closer and closer. Like I could just go down and get lost in that in that growth down there if I wanted to. So let's get more black, bring it down a little bit lower, like this. Put some blue here. Darker and bluer, get it closer and closer into this, into this foreground. It's not really much of a forest, I wouldn't say, at the moment. So, I think I want to, I think I want to uh, work with it a little bit more in the future to try to get it to look deeper, add more layers. Let's put some more of this blue right behind here. Make this pop out. Painting the negative space. You know, I do this a lot on paintings. I paint the negative space, paint the positive space. Negative space, positive space. I go back and forth so that I can uh, maintain a, a more, I don't know, uh, organically changing texture. It starts to feel real manufactured, real artificial. If I constantly focus on trying to make individual objects but if I switch back and forth, paint the space in between them, and then paint the thing that I'm trying to paint, and I just keep going back and forth like that, then I feel like it, it helps me to get better, better, more believable picture. Let's put some blue in here to blue, blue and black, get that more distant atmosphere look. Kind of just cutting into the side there a little bit. There we go. Get that bluer background to come right up onto that. Right up next to the, just get them to pop out a little bit better. And now I think if I put like big ones going up like this, I'll really finish it off. Like a big one right down here in the in the foreground. Okay, I'm gonna go up and work on the mermaid for a little bit. Let's do that so that we know where we're going with this picture. And I said I was gonna do that. I don't want to not live up to my word here. Okay, so I've got some stuff happening in the foreground. It's starting to look deeper. I'm I'm happy about that. I want that deeper look. Maybe a giant clam, that'd be fun. <laughs> Paint a shark, that'd be cool. I like sharks. I don't, I don't want to put, I don't want to put like a big dangerous shark there though, you know. I want to keep the happy, happy friendly feel in this one. But sharks are awesome. I don't like swimming in the ocean, you know that. When I go to the beach, I, I don't swim. I just get my ankles in the water, enjoy looking at the waves. That's good for me. I love the seaweed. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot. 
no hablo inglés. So, all right. <laughs> I'm not too good at Espanol either. Sea turtle paints paint a Medusa. <laughs> yeah, Medusa. Sure. You have a great imagination. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, I think uh, I think a lot of people have a great imagination. I've just learned some some really really handy tricks for getting it getting it onto the canvas, you know, and giving myself content to run with has has really helped me as well. Techniques that build build shapes. A lot of it I don't even have to imagine. Octopus, <laughs> giant octopus. <laughs> that would be cool. All right, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna come up here and see if we can get get a little bit more more detailed look. So while I'm keeping a keeping an eye on that live chat, I'm gonna be putting another camera in place right here. I'm just in a spare room in my house. We share this space. You know, I don't have a studio here, and so this whole this whole lockdown has been a real interesting experience. And so I'm just, just making do with what I, what I've got in order to get, get the cameras rolling, do these live streams. It's been fun. You know, it feels like, feels like just good old fashioned hanging out. Spectacular lighting. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, what this mermaid uh, want to catch? I know. Good question. I love that the question even comes up. I love that because to me, this is what makes a picture worth looking at is does it make you ask questions? Maybe questions like, what is it about? It doesn't have to be provocative in like, in like a controversial way. But I think that well-received artwork causes a story to happen in your mind. You look at it and you wonder what the story is. What's the story here? What's happening? And so I always try to have the what's it about question come up in pictures. So I'm really glad that you asked that. I'm thinking that she's chasing bubbles. <laughs> They're just not in the picture yet. OK, same question. What does she want? Yes, yes. I love that question. I love it. So let's develop it. Let's develop the story a little bit. Let's put the camera up here. And let me see if this is going to work. We're, we're coming in close, coming in close. We're going to take a look at Mermaid. And I've got a tripod, tripod up here. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got a good view. Oh, now you can see how good it's not. Is it possible to draw oil and acrylic colors in one painting? Yes. Yes, you can do oil. You can you can do oil on top of acrylics. I would not do acrylics on top of oil. That's just me, you know, like maybe you could get it to stick, but uh, as a painter for many years, there were many times when we tried putting water-based paint on top of oil-based paint and there's all these scientific reasons why it could work or how to make it work. Yeah, whatever. It, it, it wasn't great. It was not the same as putting oil uh, on top of a water-based primer. So if you just have a acrylic surface and you put oil paint on it, then I think that that's fine. I think it works. Of course, I don't know how it holds up over years and years, but I know that it sticks immediately and it doesn't have the annoying cracking off the surface like if you go the other way around. Okay, mermaid. Now I'm going to pull out a small brush and here, let's get a little one. Let's get an appropriately sized brush for the detail level we want to work on. And so I'm thinking, I'm thinking about this size is going to be good for, for my mermaid. And I always like to use the same shape brush. But let me see if I got a little bit better one. Let's, Let's see if we got one with a little better shape on it. <laughs> got my box of brushes down there. Got that one. We've got this one. What do you think is better, the black or the tan? Let's just try them both. We'll do black. And so here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to do this now in in uh, acrylics, the uh, tubes. I'm going to use some of those because they actually are a lot nicer for it here. Let's use a different. Let's use a different palette. Let's use this guy right here. They can be nicer for blending, and so I just wanted just just for the sake of mixing it up, doing some different things. I know that a lot of people are interested in working with acrylics. So maybe it'd be fun to squeeze it into the video. So what I'm going to do is modify the face a little bit. And to do a skin tone, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to just use orange and I'll, I'll try orange and black. Let's see how that goes. Orange and black is going to give me good mid tone and shadow but it might not be red enough so we'll see so i'm just putting the taking the lids off of my acrylic paints here and let's just see what happens when i put some orange and black on here so here's my orange and here i'm gonna do I'm just gonna put them in my hand and i'm gonna go like oh and we're not gonna do that here let's put black on there <laughs> perfect <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> Black on there. Oh, man, that was great. Okay. And then, you know, it's been a while since I opened these up. Let's put orange right here. And then I'm going to just hold some hold some white in my hand so I can just dip into it. When I need it. So I've got this big tube of white right here. And I got this cheap white from a store, but it's acrylics in a tube. Okay. So let's put some shadows on this face. And I want the head to be a little bit bigger. And so what I'm going to do is bring this shadow up this way a little bit. So I've got that. Oh yeah, the orange. So it's going to be way green. Look at this. So here's my highlight on the forehead. And this is what we always run into. So you know what we need? We need to use either red or magenta. And so I'm just going to go for red on this one. Of course, that might be a cool underwater color, but I don't know. It's a little bit on the greeny weeny side for me. So I'm going to put red right up there. And this is a fun thing about acrylic tubes also is that you can just put like a blob there and it doesn't drip. I have sprayed workable fixative on top of fully dried oil painted on top with acrylic adding glaze medium and spraying varnish on top afterwards. All right, cool. You got more experience than me. Okay. Now we're using red and orange just because it was so green when I mixed them, but this gives me more time to mix. So when I'm doing eyes, I want the socket area first, and I'm raising them up, moving them out this way, then I'm gonna go around the temple of the head. I'm just building the shadows on this head. And so I'm gonna go like this, red, orange, get that highlight in there, get the nose right here, and you know, it wasn't all just a waste to put that first face in there because that's given me the template to do the second face. It's given me lines to look at for, for this one that I want to be a little bit bigger. So let's go a socket right here and then a shadow down here on the front of the face. And I'm bumping it to the right just a little bit. So we're going to take this color add that orange and red and then i'm going to take a little more orange i'm going to put some highlights on the face so let's go like this forehead and nose cheek right there and then we're going to go bottom lip right here let's put a little bit of white in there my white is here yeah let's just i'm gonna see if i can do this without putting it on my picture Put it right on there. All right, we got some white. I'm going to grab a little bit of this. And I work like this all the time. You see the long point of the brush? So many, so many techniques I do with that long point of the brush, you know, where people feel 
this feels like the more traditional way to hold this kind of a brush, but I flip it around and touch with that longest point of it this way. Okay, forehead, let's put a little more orange because that's kind of a pink, pink tone. Put a little white in here. I don't want to get real bright on this. Nose and bottom lip right here. Let's go like this and put maybe a little bit more red for the bottom lip right right there put a little bit of white on it i just want to get enough that it starts to look look like the picture before i start messing with starts to look like where i'm trying to go with it before i start messing with getting the details in the right places so this is a cheek this is another cheek and i'm going to come over here and put that in place let's go a little bit I'm trying to decide if I want to go darker on shadows or brighter on face. So let's put a little more color right here, right across here, and a tiny bit of white. And when you're doing a face, you know, you're messing with tiny little, tiny little differences of values. And so I have to just make all of my edges with very very small differences in values. If I go too far, I don't have any room to put the other important important details of the face in there. So here I'm just trying to get just light enough. Let's put the cheeks right in there. And I want this to be a female face. You know what the, uh, does anybody know what the trick is? It's a very distinct thing to make a feminine or a masculine face. There's a trick to it. And what it is, is the size of the face bones. That's it. And so face bones affect the brows, the cheeks, the jaw, and the jaw is probably the biggest thing. And it, it affect, affects the shape of eye sockets, or uh, eyelids, I meant to say eyelids. It affects that shape. So if I'm careful not to make these eye sockets real dark, then it's going to be a more feminine looking face. So now I'm starting to like the placement. I've made the head a little bit bigger. And I'm going to take the advice out there. You know, maybe we don't need to have just dreadlocks kind of spreading out like this. Maybe we could kind of put them a little bit straighter back on this character, like the water like it's flowing in the water, you know, I, I got a little bit overly technical on last one. I said, no, we can't have long flowing hair underwater, get caught on things. And then somebody, somebody commented, no, that won't happen. It would just flow straight back in the current of the water. And I was like, okay, okay. How about we just think about what will look the nicest. Sometimes I get overly technical and start worrying about what logically could, would, should happen, you know, and you forget, hey, man, you're trying to build a fun world to look at. We're not trying to recreate the, the world outside our door. Okay, so now I'm going to put some highlights on the hair going back and just try to make some perspective. So maybe, maybe I'll just put some lighter color right here, like this, and right in here. And then I'm going to go. So what I did right there is I did orange first, then red. I'm shifting the hue, put the orange back in. And it, my end result doesn't need to be red and orange and black. They all blend into each other to make, I don't know, some shade of brownish hair. But I have my, uh, I have my color getting more toward yellow as it gets brighter and away from yellow as it gets darker to create that illuminated look on the edge of the hair. So whatever color I make it, I just need that pattern. It's not it's not getting the right color that makes it work. It's just that pattern. So now I'll just I'll just blast it with a little bit of white where I want it to be brighter. We'll have some fun little highlights of the hair catching the light back there. Go back here and just really taper it out like that. You know, we'll try to put some some foreshortening on it. So again, I'm going to go to the, you know, orange where it's brighter, 
And then I'm just going to touch a little bit of red where I want to go darker. So I'm taking this red, putting it in these areas like this. Let's go back there. And then this is where I go darker in here where I've got the red so that I just see that pattern happening. Okay, so now I've got a real rough looking face, hardly anything there. It's just, you know, it's just an obscured set of shadows. Looks pretty funny. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do is start putting details where I want them to be. So look, here's a fun thing with eyes, uh, gray, black and white, right? We get black and white. I think this is the only time that you guys are seeing right now that I've ever done small acrylic work, you know, like tubes of acrylics uh, publicly on YouTube. So this is this is momentous here. So watch a little dot here and here and then here and here. And that's how we put the whites of the gray dots. One, two, thinking that they're kind of uh, darker, maybe green eyes. I think green would be cool. So I'm going to maybe bring this up a little bit. And just to visualize the whole thing here, let's get a darker, darker browner color here. We've got darker brown color up in here. Let's go red, black, orange, and put a little brow on here like this. Go across there. And now she's got brows. And we're going to put, we're going to put a little more, a little more hair coming out this way so that the eyes are not so close to the top of the head. Like this, we need just a little bit more light. Let's take some red, put it down in here where it's starting to get darker. But that's too much. That's a lot of red right there. Let's put some black right on top of that red, like this, and then just make the hair kind of, right now it's just a shadow. I can make a little bit of, this is a fun trick here. Here's a fun little highlight we can do. So we've got it kind of catching the light from behind, but we can also go like this and make it kind of catching that blue light with a smaller, softer highlight like that. So now we've got multiple multiple light sources going and catching the light like this. Okay, let's take a little more of that. I like the like the effect that that makes. Put it right in here. Whoops, sorry, bumps the bumps the tripod there. All right, all right. Let's let's adjust the spooky face. So now I'm going to take a take a green and so I've got a tube. Let's stick with the acrylics. I've got a real good phthalo green in these acrylics. I just kind of got a real minimal set of the same colors that I use. So let's get oh, a little bit right there. Dunk. That's good. Let's just put it right there and go like this. Put an eyeball right there and right there. And I've got excess. I got a booger, paint booger on the picture right there. And then we'll grab some. I think orange will be a good highlight. So here's a cool trick you can do on eyes. You put the light on the on the opposite side of where the light's coming from. So if I want light, let's say light's coming somewhere above. Let's just say it's coming from above. We're going to put brighter color at the base of this, blend it in like this. So I just put some orange in there, and then I'm going to put some white like this. And let's see if we can get a, a, little, a little bright pop of green as this lighter color mixes into the darker color. then put some of that darker green on top of it like this. All that dark green color is up above. And then the lighter green color is down there to get the eyes to have a nice glow. 
So we go like this. Not sure how easy that is to see where you are. Oh, there we go. A little brighter. Maybe I added too much of that orange, kind of lost my color. Yeah, nice bright green hitting the hitting the bottom of the eye. And then I'm going to put a little black dot in the middle of that. And, you know, it's so funny. We can, we can put such small details on a face in a painting. That's the one place. If I do those little details on the kelp, nobody cares. You know, but here... This is where there's a payoff for doing the tiny details. I'm gonna put a little dot in the middle to darken each eye. Then I'm gonna put a black line across the top of it. I keep forgetting I'm using this black now. This is my acrylic. I keep going to the, to the court can that's up there. So let's go like this and, and put a nice even curve on the top of the eye. This creates a smaller face bone by saying that the eyelid is not obstructed by a deep eye socket. So smoother curves is a good feminine feature. If you want a face to look more feminine, using smooth curves on the top of the eyelid gives the same look that comes from having less obstruction to that curve from the eye socket. So I'm going to go like this, put that dark line in place here. Let's just adjust here, put the brows. And again, the brows, keeping some distance above the eye, also makes a less deep eye socket. So even though this is a really messy, sloppy looking face, it has a feminine quality already just by not having dark sunken shadows and keeping the eyebrow above a curved eyelid. So we can do a lot better than this too. I'm gonna put a little more shadow on the top side of that middle part of the eye to just really get them to pop out of the white. And I'm thinking that maybe I'll just go a little brighter on the white of the eye too, just, just to get enough contrast. I mean, we're really splitting hairs on the difference of these things. So let's go a little bit wider, but it's worth it on a face. This is the one time where, where I'll take the time to do it split split differences like this let's go a little bit brighter a little bit brighter on the white of the eye right there on that side and maybe a little bit on this side like that just get a little bit of eye to show and then we're going to put a little bit of a a lower eyelid right here so let's grab the black here and go like this Put a little black strip right under that. And I'm gonna slope it up a little bit. So a common feature is outside corners that are higher than inside corners. So I'm gonna do that feature right here. I'm gonna bring that corner up like that. Raise that outside eye a little bit higher. And then I'm gonna put a little bit better highlights around this face now. So we've got the we've got the eyelashes coming over to the corner like that. Now I can put let me rinse my brush real quick and put some highlights on there. All right, I'm reading some live chat. This is interesting. I was trying to sketch my son's face last night so hard. Well, yes, it is hard. Uh, but I can rec if if you want to see if you want to see a little bit more more tricks on that I've got a video how to draw faces where I just kind of go through basic things that you can look for things that are easily overlooked when you're drawing a face so common locations of things is is one step but like like this where it's like okay look for which corner of the eye is higher the, these are things that can uh, be missed you know when we're when we're just drawing what we notice what we see. So I've got a video on that that you might take a look at. It's free. And at least there's a short version that's free on YouTube. So I'm going to put a little brighter highlight now on the forehead. So let's do white, orange, red, just to get this, this color here. And let's start 
putting some, you can't be afraid of paint, you know, we got to just keep putting more paint to get to the color that we want to see. So I've got black where I want the shadow. I'm going to need red to keep it from turning green because where the black meets the light orange shade is too green. So I'm just using some red to get it to look, look more like skin tone. So white, orange, red, Okay, now I've got my skin color back and it's not quite as extremely bright, but a little brighter than it was, and that's good. So now we're gonna go down here, let's go here. Maybe a little bit brighter, let's go orange again, and then add some white. Now the trick with this is it's underwater, she's kind of facing away from any bright light, but I could add brighter light in there. But I'm thinking I don't wanna go super bright now with details right let's put a little nostril right about right about here and then put the cheek going over right there like that so let's bring the nose over this way and let's put the bridge in the nose going right down between and let's put this cheek coming down a little bit further here and now we've got the Cheeks on this side coming down to the chin. So we've got a natural triangle that goes right down here to the chin. Then we need a shadow that is under the bottom lip. So let's put some black right here. Well, we got too much. Let's just put it on the hair. Let's go here, get a nice dark brown. I'm just going to use our hair to mix my dark browns. We want a shadow right here under this lip between the lip and the chin. And this gets the more natural concave on the face right there. Go like that, put that shadow in there. And then we need our lighter color again. So let's take this and put it on the chin and make that shadow just little, not huge. Goes right down here. And then let's take this darker color again and go down the side of the face like this. So this triangle, this is where we can determine how, how uh, fatty a face is. We can, put it, we can put it more thin and lean. We can, make it, we can make it rounder, but this line, this is that shadow that really develops that on your character. So let's go like this and put a little bit of color. Color looks good in transitions on skin tone. So let's put a little bit of color right in that transition. And now it looks a little bit like she's got whiskers. So we're going to take some of this gray and add the same kind of backlight effect to the side of her head right in here. Like this. Now we're just going to have a grayer color going right down the side right here like here right to the chin like that. And then I think it's gonna look a lot better if I also have a top lip. So we still haven't done that. That's gonna add a lot. So I'm gonna use black and red. It's downward facing. I want it to have color, but I also want it to be dark. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go top lip, make one bump. Let's go like this. Two little bumps here. And it's easy to go too big. I think I've already done it. Go up like this, a little higher to the nose, maybe. And then I'm going to put the highlight on the lower lip again here. Kind of lost that in the process of doing that shadow. So let's get some, some red. Look how my, my hands shake. I have to really like hold it with my other hand. Like this, we're going to go up on this shadow, move this. Move that shape bigger. There we go. There we go. Now I got more of a face on there. Scoot that over. And then I'm going to put a little bit of black right here for the middle of the mouth. There, now our mouth's a little bit open, like she's interested in something. Right here. 
And then let's take a little bit more of this red, a little more of this red, and darken this corner a little bit right there. I want that highlight on that lower lip there to be a little more, a little more centered. Okay, now I'm going to put the, I'm going to put some of these bigger shadows in place again that I lost in the process of doing this. So I've got a shape to the chin that I don't want to lose. So I'm going to take this shadow in here that goes under that chin and put it going up here like this. Get that shape back. We want to have a chin that goes zoop like this, not too far under the lip. So the higher I bring that chin, the uh, the more feminine and youthful a face can become if I just bring that bring that chin up. So here's red and orange to get a little more of my lighter skin tone, so I can come out onto this arm right here, up to this neck. I want that shadow, but I don't want it to be so extreme. So I'm just coming in here and getting more of my more of my skin tone up here under this head. Let's get a little more of that red right here. When it goes to green, I just add red. Just keep the paint coming, you know. Let's go like that. And then we can put some put some white right in here. Get this, get the shoulder highlight back comes right down there and then we can go right here in the middle of the in the middle of the chest right here this is going to kind of go across to the collarbones like that and now I feel like I want to soften this shadow on the nose a little bit that'll that'll be an improvement so I'm going to use a shadow here's a good spot to just get a shadow going Let's go right here and go. Just soften that whole transition area. Like this, so that I don't have such a such hard contrast on the nose. Okay, let's get a little bit. Let's see. Let me think about this. I'm going to I'm going to make the eye not so close together, too. So I went real big on the whites of the eyes. Let's go in here and cut off the edge of this one a little bit. Let's get a color. Let's get a color like this. Uh, let's make these mix these together. Maybe a little lighter, huh? Let's go a little bit lighter. Orange, red. Then I'm going to go in here and just cut off that right side inside corner of this eye just right here zoop, like this and i'm going to put this little shadow under it right there then let's take the highlights in there so tedious process huh making a face and so the way i'm doing this is not with special technique the way that I build a face is just good old fashioned understanding of the parts. That's all it is. So I'm just looking at it gradually, uh, walking through in my mind, what parts do I need to have in here? And gradually building them. Uh, so I don't have a, you know, I did the basic shadows first. I did do that. So that's a good, good technique, I think. You know, watch, I can just do high points. Let's do brighter spots for highlights in here. Do a nose right here. And let's put a little nostril right there next to it. And so when I just put this brighter white on the picture, it just creates high points. Just the brighter spots. And so I'm going to come over here and maybe... Let's go a little bit darker as we go this way. And then we're going to slope this down under these eyelids. I'm just trying to trying to get the shape of the eyelids right there. I'm going to put a little bit of a redder, darker shadow under each cheek right here, right here, right across from the nose. 
like this. And now let's do some do some red and orange and get our dark hair back right along here. Oh, she needs an ear. Right between the nose and the brow is about the height of the ear right there. Let's put a little bit of shadow in that ear like this. Put some red like that. And then I'll just put some hair across it. Let's put some black going right through here and get our get our darker shadowed hair color. Hair lines come right across the temple right here and then up around the forehead. So we can go up like this and down on the top to get a natural looking hairline like that. Oops, sorry, I keep bumping the camera. And so now what I'm going to do, one last little touch. Hi, guys. I'm an artist from Bali, Indonesia. All right, cool. Anyone in or been to Bali? Yep. Five eye across. All right. I'll tell you something about the fire. Who just said, who said five eye across? Wait, hold up. Five eyes across. Artist Diana Burgoyce. Hey, cool. Cool trick. And so... This changes with age. This is a valuable thing to know. Eyes across, you know, you put, you can put, you know, four of these circles to fit in between each other. You've got maybe somebody my age, maybe somebody in their 20s, 30s. You put it five eyes that can fit in the middle, more common on someone over that age. So the older people get, I've noticed the more of the iris, the iris is that easy to measure, perfect circle. And so, you know, uh, on my five-year-old, it's only three. And so as people get younger, you can create youth in a face with with uh, that right away is how how many of those circles can you fit in between each other? Fun little, fun little relationship. Okay, okay. I'm almost ready to call it a day on this face. But what I'm going to do is this little bit of backlighting i want a gray color and i'm just going to go like this right here along this edge Zoop, like that that's going to get a little bit darker and maybe i'll put it in here on the edge of the nose here let's get a little bit lighter too let's get a little bit of light on there let's go out like that let's go down here little bit of a just just a little light on the edge of a face and do that effect I'm relying on this to get darker right here it goes up along this brow like that up and around this eye I got to be conscious of it getting darker as it dries let's put a little bit of this same highlight on that edge right there. Make a forehead like that. Let's put some light on that hair going back. Maybe I'll get rid of some of that hair that's going down on that side. And then I can put it down here on the arm. Let's go like this under the arm. I've already got some in there. And then I can highlight this edge going down the breast right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shave off some of this. some of this edge. So now I'm going to go back to my my bluer paint and my or my water, my water paint that's blue and I'm going to shave off some of this form right here. So let's go blue, white. I have a little bit of black in there to get that color. Maybe like that and I'm going to take this up here. I never get things right where I want them the first time, you know. So this is how I adjust. I just I just shave those edges off to gradually get them right where I want them to be. Let's do a little bit more blue in here. And since I really want that to show up, 
Mm, I'm trying to decide dark or lighter. What should I do? I'm going to go lighter. Let's lighten it. Like this, put some foreshortening on this arm as it comes forward. Now this is kind of fun. I like these. I'm just using my I'm just using my big cans of paint now. I like bright green for this right here. So for the bikini, I'm gonna go up and around the shoulders here, like this. I'm gonna put a highlight on there to make a three-dimensional shape. So let's go maybe like right here. Let's highlight that edge with one color, maybe a little bit down here. And then we'll use a different color as we go toward the front, but that's bright. You know, we don't want to go that bright. So let's go a little bit of black on here. Darken that very edge. And if you have colors going along an edge, it creates a nice three-dimensional look on what you're trying to paint. Now I'm going to put some yellow on there because I want this, maybe this has like a, fishy scales or something that has like a translucent look to it. So if, again, if I shift the hue, then I think it's going to look good. So where I have, you know, maybe the color facing more toward me right there, I'll leave a little bit of texture. So maybe it's, it's like a little more of a fishy scaled look. You know, let's do a little bit more. Let's do green right on the front here. Make this edge sharper and go up here behind the head like this down here over the chest Do the same thing in here like that and here probably going to cut off some of that as it goes up up maybe around the back like so and then let's put some yellow little yellow dots Oh, now she's decorated with some sparkly little, little sequins or something. I'm just going to make texture in little rows like this to get that look. Probably don't want to go too extremely bright on this. It's not going to be very, very consistent with the rest of the picture to put a real bright, bright highlight on that. So I got to keep it dark. Maybe I'll get some black and white kind of graded out a little bit. Let's put white in here, and then we'll do black after that to make it not quite as bright. So going across, just muting the color a little bit, and then I'll get black. Let's grab some of this black right here and go like this across the base of it. I will add some reflection in there. Look, it's reflecting the, reflecting the tree down here. Like that, we'll kind of make a little bit of a gradient on this top edge. Like this, goes around here. I think one of the hardest things is just getting real clean edges, you know. High contrast is how you get a high reflective texture. You know, you want something to look more reflective. Put color contrast and lightness, darkness contrast. This is something like reflecting the colors of the environment, the truer, the truer color and value of the environment around. This is what would happen, you know, if something is more reflective. So I can get a little bit more of a reflective look on this with that, with that knowledge. I'm going to put a little bit more green down in here, maybe just a little more white, because I still feel like this is extreme bright color for, for the context. So let's add a little bit of, of gray to it right in here. A little bit seems to go a long way for this. So we're adding black, white where I put the black. It's just too extreme. Okay, cool. Now I'll go over here and just kind of straighten up that line. And let's go like this. Let's put a 
<laughs> bikini top jacket fan. Well, you know, I think that I think mermaids are human enough to invent and create things. You know, they have hands, they have minds. So, you know, let's give credit where it's due. She went and got it at the mermaid store. Beyonce. <laughs> that always happens. You know, whenever I, uh, it's not the worst person to look like. <laughs> so it always happens when I, when I randomly pull a person out of imagination, it always ends up looking like somebody. Inevitably, you know, there's just too many people out there. You're right. You're right. It does resemble Beyonce. That's funny. Okay, now uh, this shadow's bothering me a little bit. I'm gonna go up here, get my brown color, red, orange, add a little bit of black and white to it, see if I can. Adjust that color a little bit. Going up there on the side of the face, like this. Let's put a little of that same highlight on the side of the neck going down. Make it kind of match a little bit better. All right, now I'm gonna clean up some of my lines. And so we'll go in here, do the shoulder again, add a little bit of black for that, a little bit of white. I'm, uh, I am releasing very soon a, a series of videos on drawing people. And so the way I do this is by knowing how to draw it. So knowing how to draw it is, is for me where all of this started. And so I just add color to the shapes that I know in order to paint it. There it's, would you call this bikini or more of a sports bra when it kind of goes around the back like that? I'm not sure. Not an expert on those things. <laughs> Here, let's put some white going around the shoulder now. Like that, put that highlight going there and then down the side of the chest right there, right here, we've got a shoulder. I don't like where I put that hand. We'll adjust that. We'll adjust that in a future video or just on my own, you know, probably shouldn't exhaust this one too much. arm I'm going to put the arm going a little more a little more straight like that adjust the angle of it let's go like this did I just say I wasn't going to do that on this video is that what I said I always say I'm not going to but then I just don't stop I just don't stop painting put some little shadows in here I think shadow up under the hair would be good let's go like this Put a little bit of white in there, kind of gray that color a little bit. We're going straight back on the arm now. Here, let's get some white for the for the highlights on the edge of it. Here we've got tricep, shoulder. That's that little muscle going down to the fingers. Here's the underside of the forearm right here goes like that just real little make that little highlight i'm using kind of a, a lighter browner color to do all that edge lighting now and you can see it's kind of a, a better look than what i had before all right now i'm gonna adjust this this tail right here let's put a little bit of white right here This is going to be visible now because I don't have that arm coming down in front. So we'll go there, put a little bit of yellow. And now we've got this highlight coming down here. And let's make that move into a more orange color. 
Mm. How does fish skin turn to human skin? What does the transition look like? Mm. We've got some mermaid enthusiasts that I'm sure could point me the right way for that. But I'm just going to do a gradient. So I used orange from the green, and now I'm going to put a little highlight on here. And going around the back, coming down like this. It's going to get greener as it goes this way. Then let's get our red-orange skin color come down this way. Now I've got the waist and the, the hip going up across here. So we'll put this, put this skin tone coming up a little higher here where you would like have the side of a butt right there. Then right here, we'll put a highlight on the back in more of the normal skin color, running low on orange. Let's just do a little dip. I dip right in the tube a lot of the time, just jump up like that. Put the excess here where I can reuse it. There we go. Well, I think that's good for good for now, you know, until I until I have better ideas. Oh man, I just looked at how huge the difference is between the two arms. That is out of control. Okay. We gotta shave more off of that. Let's just put a little bit more blue. A little bit more blue and white under here. I got to shave off the edge of the arm, get the proportions a little more. Foreshortening's cool with the big hand there, but I got to really make sure it looks good. So we're going to go down here and then over here, just make the arm a little bit skinnier to match the perspective of the picture a little bit better. Maybe a little bit higher. There we go. Here, let's just put some of these little things back in here to make it blend. Here we put a little bit of a rib cage coming down, belly, hip. You know, human form is very much about managing the subtle curves. It's not, you know, there's not very many, there's not very many extreme curves doing human form. I'm gonna move the camera now. Let's scoop back. Let's go like this. So impressive, hey, thanks. Thanks, Barra Pazir. Thank you very much. Let me move this out of the way. All right, we're going to start wrapping it up here. I've gone for a long time. I was really having fun. 1044. Whoa, that's what it says on my computer. 1044. I'm excited to try out a new setup. I got some new gear coming. Got a, got a, uh, a new computer. Maybe, maybe it'll improve the streaming. Of course, this hasn't been bad, the quality of this, this streaming here. Yes, back wider highlights. All right, cool. Maybe a little more, but not too much. Maybe a little more, but not too much. But you spelled butt, B-U-T-T, -T, so I don't know if you're saying a little more butt. Because <laughs> I like butt. <laughs> I think it'd be good. <laughs> a little more, but not too much. <laughs> How long have you... Oh, you're talking to uh, your car, talking to uh, Val. Cool. Huh. When I draw men, they look like girls. Yeah. It's all in the size of those face bones. Face bones. You know, you can build them with shadows or with, you know, just the size of shapes. Beyonce, but yeah. 
well, you know, it needs to be able to flip a fishtail. And, uh, you know, they say swimmers do well when they have a flat butt, you know, like Michael Phelps. Is it Michael Phelps, the famous Olympian swimmer? Little butt. So I don't know. Of course, I'm getting too technical. All we want is just a good looking mermaid in the end. That's what we want. You know, it's such a funny thing drawing human form. You got to do boobs, butts, and penis area. You, you got to do uh, all kinds of awkward things. But these are things we look at every day. And when we're shopping for jeans, it's like, how's my butt look? You turn around, you show your friend, how's the butt look? And then, when, you know, I don't know about you, but I can't not see butts everywhere I go. I, my eyes, they see the butt of a person that's walking. So, I'm not going to pretend like it's not a basic part of making <laughs> making people in. I think she meant butt. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we were we were uh, riffing. <laughs> cool. Hard work today, Joe, but very interesting. Thank you again. Ha oh, ha. Says Val. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. So this is bothering me. This is bothering me. We're going to shut it down, but I got to get rid of this. I got to get rid of this right here. That is annoying. Let's put some white on there. Let's put this here. Clean this up a little bit. I don't want that big black blob right above the head there. There we go. There we go. So what I'm going to do, you know, we've got this hand reaching out. I thought it would be cool for the future, you know, of the of the painting. And I'm, I'm going to try to finish this off tomorrow. So uh, tune in again uh, tomorrow. I'm going to put like some big lit up bubbles. And I, I'm thinking that there needs to be a lot of light behind this hand. So see this area right here? Let's go right between the fingers, right between the fingers. I'm going to develop this more. I'm just doing a quick layout. Thinking right here. And here we're gonna we're gonna do some like real big bright shapes out in front of this character. Like this. We'll put some bright shapes in here so that there's like something bright behind lighting up the hand that's reaching out. So remember I said it's just chasing bubbles. I really want to do that. I really want to make her chasing bubbles. So we'll go like this. We'll put some dark shadows under these. Realistic black and blue. But I think I want to put like some cool colors, like bubbles that like have some have some colors glowing from inside. So we'll get to that. Some real, real fun special effects to make it a real, you know, more of like a real fantasy themed picture. Put these in. More bubbles. We're going to do lots of bubbles. Tiny bubbles. We're going to make big bubbles. I want to make like a giant, maybe coming up out of like something volcanic or something like that. Something real eye-catching and bright and mystical looking. So that's where I'm going with it. You know, that's what I'm thinking. All right, any last comments before we shut her down? Let's move this. Here you can see the whole thing. Let's get it where it's a little, little easier to see the whole picture. Like that. That's where we're at so far. Jellyfish, all right, all right. She should be rescuing her merman. Hey, that's a good idea. That'd be cool. To be continued tomorrow. Yes, we'll be here tomorrow. Same time, same bat time, same bat channel. Remember that? <laughs> the famous phrase. Yeah, 9 a.m. That's when we started this. So uh, if you didn't catch that, 9 o'clock a.m. tomorrow morning, uh, right here on the uh, Mural Joe channel. And we'll continue the painting, hopefully finish it. I'm hoping. Who like to see other forms of water life in your painting? Yeah, well, that would be cool. It would definitely be cool. Just takes me a long time to paint it, and I'm a little concerned about overdoing the same concept for too many videos in a row, you know. I like David Bell's idea. She could be rescuing her merman or something or something. Yeah, I could make them all tied up in the kelp, or maybe he's 
Okay, like if we have like little caverns and holes down in there, we made a suction got he stuck in a <laughs> soup. <laughs> I don't know. Make a rescuing a like little mermaid, put a prince kind of kind of floating down, like he's almost dead, floating down in the water. <laughs> Great painting, Joe. Thank you for sharing your talent. Hey, my pleasure. It's always an honor. Honor to have an audience, you know. I feel like I'm the one that should be saying thank you for sure. Loving the story. Merman wrestling an octopus. Hey, cool idea. Cool idea. He's wrestling. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. That would be cool. Okay, I want to thank you guys again for tuning in. We're going to take this off of here. I got some cleaning up to do, and uh, I'll look forward to to uh, the further developments of the of the painting. Oh, shipwreck! That is a good idea. That'd be cool. See you, Joe. See you, Jim Cricket. Thanks for being here. Thanks a lot. All right, good seeing you guys again. I'm ending the stream. Right.